Hola, buenas tardes en España, buenos días en Latinoamérica. Hi, good afternoon, good evening in America. I'm Fermin Nunez. I'm responsible for communication for my project My House, Plan Inclusión España. I want to welcome all of you to this second seminar of our cycle about communities last uh, September. Uh, the 26th, we did the first seminar of this cycle in which we introduced the importance and the meaning of care communities thanks to the collaboration of our colleagues from Citizen Network that are with us. This has been organized by the project My House Community Life. It's a project of Plan Inclusion that want to change care policies through strat state strategy uh, for care passed by our government, the Spanish government, and that is pushing forward projects related not just with uh, intellectual and development disability people, but also for homeless people, childhood, and other groups in order to find links and connection about this generation of inclusive, open, diverse communities and so on. So all these projects we are pushing forward, this kind of communities and these seminars have been instrumental in my case for uh, Una Vida en Comunidad to push them forward together with Citizens Network. So for this seminar, we are gonna land uh, what we did uh, at the last seminar. By the way, it is available on our webpage www.planinclusion.org. If you look for Comunidades de Cuidados, you'll find the recording. And this seminar has also been recorded and will be uploaded at that very same page. For the seminar, as I was saying, we're going to land in practice what we meant at the first seminar. We're going to do this through several examples that we are putting forward from Spain, Latin America, and Great Britain, so we'll have uh, practices from a community connector and a person living in our project, Una Vida en Comunidad, also colleagues belonging to one of the uh, organizations into Vida Independiente in Argentina, and also Simon Duffy and Andrea from PFG, Doncaster, will be with us. and will tell us their experience. I would uh, want, like to say that this session has been recorded. You also have the chat available to greet, to uh, write your doubts and remarks. After these practices uh, panel, we'll have groups uh, discussion. We'll let you a little while to share uh, your projects together. Marcus will explain it, it also from Citizen Network, and then we'll share conclusions. And uh, at the end, Marcus Valhalla, together with Simon and Andrea, will also talk a little bit about the conditions for transformation. They will give us a little talk, because precisely we have this international company language interpretation is available. So you can go to the lower part on your screens, you'll see some icons about language interpretations. If you don't, you can see them, it means that you'll have to activate an icon with three points with uh, go to more options and then search for uh, your preferred language. And that's also, uh, the floor is to Natalia she will introduce the practices panel, and there we go. Thanks a lot for me. My name is Natalia. I also work for Plan Inclusión España, and my role here is to introduce the experiences that are the Wonderful part of a seminar. I would like to introduce Tamara Rivero from Albacete, Castilla-La Mancha region. They will tell us their experiences about 
community connectors and other uh, innovations. Tamara, the floor is yours. Hello, good evening. I'm Tamara, I'm community connector for Albacete, Castilla-La Mancha region in Spain. Here in Albacete, we count on a community house in the framework of Mikasa project where people in, with disability are in transit since November 2021. Six people with intellectual disability that were into a residence that are older than 60 years old. This uh, apartment is a large one with two uh, living rooms and uh, individual rooms. And after these people moved, the life changed completely from Albacete, today we want to tell the story of Isabel, a person living in this apartment, a person that before entering this Asprona residence, she grew up in Franciscano's neighborhood in Albacete with uh, the relatives and elderly brothers. Uh, uh, she, the, the mother became older and Isabel had to support, although she needed support herself. Then she entered in the residence in, with 49 years. She entered the residence a few years later, entering this residence. Her mother died, Isabel would uh, receive support and care from her sister-in-law, but this residence period was better for her because her family couldn't uh, meet her needs. She's been living there for 17 years until November 2021, when, he, when she moved with 66 years to this apartment before Isabel was all day in the streets talking to everybody from her balcony. She's been always a people that loves being in community and being in the street. When she had the chance uh, to come to this project to live in community, Isabel didn't think it too much because the houses in her, the neighborhood where she was born in Isabel is remembered as Isabelita when she was a little girl. That's her nickname. And everybody says she looks great now when she strolls through the neighborhood. She remembers all the shops. The neighborhood knows her. The neighbors uh, at the building she lived, she remembers her names her professions, her rel the relatives. Uh, now I'm gonna give the floor to Isabel and Tony, she's a support person for uh, Isabel at the house. Let them speak for themselves and you can see this experience in first hand. Good evening. What's your name? Isabel Martinez Boadilla, and I'm Tony. The support person for Isabel at this house. How do you remember people in the neighborhood? I remember them. Well, how do they call you, Isabel? For them, you were Isabelita. 
when you talk every day, when you meet him in the street, they tell us anecdotes when he, she was in the neighborhood with her mother, she liked to help her neighbors. What happened one day, she came to help a neighbor and then her mother couldn't find her. All the neighborhood was searching for her because she is very supportive and likes to help people. What did you do at home with your mother? I would help her peel the potatoes, cook, and here I do the same. She's going back to the same thing. She loves it because she's a very homely person. What else can we tell? Uh, I'm knitting now, sewing with people from the neighborhood in the summer. Where, where do you do this? In the parks. And now in winter at the cultural center that she inaugurated it, by the way. Tell them. The Agora, uh, myself, that herself together with a major. And she promoted it throughout the neighborhood. You have to come to see me. Well, what for? To see her inaugurating the Agora. There is a plaque under a cotton, and it was inaugurated. And she would be inviting everybody from the shops in the neighborhood. Here the gets along very well with the hairdressers. Uh, they are friends. And they, at the hairdressers, she talks to them about the, uh, some gossiping. We like to be at the balcony. She has a very privileged view and a very good hearing. And she loves to be in her neighbor neighborhood. She's always with the neighbors together with Pedro. What does he tell you? Pretty girl, where are you going? She says, now we're going to do this event, this activity. What are you doing now? Tell us. I'm needing some flowers for the bread bag because I, she loves to put the bread in those uh, in those back knitted bags and I come back to this neighborhood uh, here there was this uh, tailor shop uh, from Emilio. She knows all the shops, new ones, old ones. We have a great time. She's a very optimist, joyful woman. For her, everything is just joy. And she is a little bit the, the mom of the house. She pays attention to everybody, her partner, everybody here. What else can we tell them? Which activity have you started anew, Isabel? Uh, yeah, hand, handicraft works. Uh, I, I go to this cultural center with many more women, elderly people. Which days do you go The Mondays and Wednesdays? Where do you go in Wednesdays? I go to the group Barriada. Which activity do you like to, to do Tuesday? Where do you like to go? And yeah, to have some fresh, uh, very at the neighborhood, little market, very popular at Albacete. It's called the Invasores, Invaders, and she loves it to do shopping, some fruit and stuff. And she has very good memory. She remembers where the cheapest stuff are sold. And she tells me, we need to buy this cheaper than the other place. Yeah. 
Y ella está pendiente. It ella... was at the prick at this big supermarket when anything is needed for the washing machine uh, and anything, she is very, very attentive to that. Isabel, like we have told you, loves to stay at the neighborhood every Wednesday. She comes to a meeting of women in the neighborhood where they need, would need uh, this appointment, gathers together all women in the neighborhood are one of the persons that is a natural support for Isabel. Uh, was meant to uh, participate today, but she wanted to leave us a message with a video we want to show you so you can uh, hear the testimony of a person in the community when she talks about Isabel and all the people at this apartment that she knows and interacts with. Let's check if you can hear the sound. It's an enormous opportunity to get to know those who are living in the apartment. I don't think it's something that I would have been able to do otherwise. And I think this is very enriching because they have the confidence of being with you, of addressing you. And uh, at the same time, I see myself well, I think that it's really something very beautiful to be there with them. And uh, you learn a lot and to see them participating. You see just like anybody else, choosing what they want to do, participating in every activity that they like. That freedom of choice is something that we all aspire to. We all want to choose what we do, choose our lives to the extent possible. Why wouldn't they be allowed to have this opportunity? And why wouldn't they be the ones picking the things that they do? So the possibility that they have of participating in all activities, and if they enjoy them, they can go back to them. Also, they go to these places where they know other people. It's always nice to get to know new people, but I think that they feel more secure uh, with the people that they know, for instance, with Isabel, with, with any person that they're familiar with. And you know that they have this sense of trust and of willing to participate. And of course, I am participated. I'm excited to participate in this as well. And the orchard that we have, this upkeeping of the orchard, I have to commend them for the, their commitment, for their willingness to keep the orchard alive and growing. So in my view, the orchard is something that should remain because it's something that is really um, fabulous for everyone. Vale. Finally, to wrap up this contribution, we would like to show you a video of Isabel where you can see her through different pictures, how she participates in the community life. So, this was the news from Albaceta, just to tell you a little bit about Isabel's life and how good this project was for her and that 
what you see has been made possible also with the support of the people in the apartment and with all the professionals who are working for making the people with disabilities lives better would you like to say goodbye isabel thank you she says let her be a role model so that other people can also enjoy the new possibilities and go back to their own neighborhoods and enjoy their lives in the community. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for telling us this story that was so beautiful and we're very happy to see the results that you are having. And we hope that this is an example for many more people. Thank you for sharing this. We're going to give the floor to Dora Preira and Nicolás Massam, uh, who are from the association in Argentina within the network of independent life in the country. Good morning for us. Good afternoon for those who are listening from Europe. We are extremely happy to be participating and listening to other experiences that are somewhat similar with different uh, participants but very similar to what we're doing here. And this is what we want to share now. In the previous seminar, we had other colleagues who were talking about this very network of uh, for the independent life of people that was created after a first Ibero-American meeting related to the life of people with disabilities and their independent life in the region of Patagonia. After that meeting, several social organizations working in this environment got together with young populations, adult populations. It's, this network is made of different associations. And what brings us together is that we've been working with the community within the community in a very interactive manner. We are open doors uh, organizations and we all have as projects related to independent life. Understanding independent life, the project that each person chooses for their own lives. Sometimes we're talking about share housing. Sometimes we provide support for the people in their uh, living spaces. Sometimes we work, we work in lifelong uh, skill building to support independent life and other people work in the field of sharing a house uh, among friends or colleagues who have chosen this project for themselves. It is important to highlight the reason behind this network, it is the social organizations that are pushing this independent life in Argentina. We have a map of our country on the screen, and we hope that in further seminars, we can add more little dots to this map. But for now, this is the region, these are the regions that we are representing. And we're going to uh, give continuation to what was said in the previous seminar. This is very much related to this way that we try to find on the spot solutions to make things work. So we're going to show you what the, a wire is. This is a popular expression that we use that means that we tie things with a piece of wire. So sometimes when something is broken, one needs a specific part to make things work. But oftentimes as social organizations, this part, which can be resources or the funding or whatever is missing. So what we tend to say is we put the parts together with this piece of wire. This type of solutions are fast solutions, temporary, but very creative. And there are also solutions that solve the problem for the time being. And we also have this other concept to add to this idea that is related to the to an expedition. Also, considering 
the flexibility of the wire, you know, that many people, when we think, think they think of Argentina, they think of Messi. Um, we instead think of Argentina, and we relate it with the idea of five explorers who put together this little boat with a little sail, just a bunch of logs, and they put everything together, and they started this adventure, and they reached their destination that they had set themselves to reach. They connected uh, Venezuela with uh, Puerto Rico. And uh, here, we believe we are a bit like that. We have this boat that we keep together with our experience, with our knowledge, because these people needed to know the tides and the uh, winds, and they needed to have the will to keep on going until they reach their their destination. There's this little sentence that I find very interesting. Um, the captain said that I, um, he was looking for people who were brave enough, who didn't fear anything, who had a real purpose, and that who was committed to keep working until they reached the goals. And so this is also our, our idea in the, this context where we were telling you about who we are, where we come from, what are the goals that we set for ourselves with the people that come up to us. Um, we want to have for them to have um, participatory interaction with us as citizens, as, as neighbors within their own communities and neighborhoods. And we establish a difference between what it means to being a citizens and what it means to be a neighbor. To be a citizen is a sort of a broader vision, more encompassing with regards to the responsibilities and the exercise of your own rights and duties as a citizen. And the neighbor are more the day-to-day people that we see the in the close encounters with the people near you within a close environment. It is very important for us to differentiate these two terms, citizens and neighbors. They coexist, of course, because citizens uh, are more related to the legal responsibilities, to the legal definition. But here we focus very much you know, at least in Latin America and Argentina, we think about the consolidation of these communities of care that we are discussing here, because we really uh, support ourselves on these uh, neighbors to trust and build communities. And we are working continuously within the neighborhoods. And now how do we do our intervention? How do we participate in the life of the uh, neighborhood. Well, we have this holistic vision, this vision of a circular economy, and we see these interactions from the neighborhood towards the people with disabilities and vice versa. But these are some of the examples that we of the things that we've been carrying out within the, the um, organizations that belong to this network. Some of them have to do with volunteering, with social networks. So we have these uh, cooperative environments. We improve areas such as schools, things that are common places for the community. We also um, deal with the establishment of signals um, that can point to the disability um, friendly areas. This acts as, as a very useful tool also to give visibility towards the community. We find very appealing the possibility of using the space, of intervening in this space. We obviously value the use of this public space, but we think it is important to be actively participate and to transform the environment in terms of its quality, in terms of improving it. Here, for instance, we're intervening uh, through painting some uh, spaces that are for common use for the community use. And in this way, we ratify our commitment as neighbors and part of this community. Also, the community gardens, organization of the compost, all actions that are mutually beneficial, uh, 
utilization of public uh, spaces like a square, painting, benches, mutually unethical things. This reciprocity notion is so important for us because this points out to change in the ways of looking to look for other forms of interaction inside the community. This is also about communication, the arts, uh, citizenship, and active citizenship. Taking into account, for instance, this image of the different organizations of this network, the common ground is about to speak up in the first person. People with disability being heard about ideas, reclaims, desires, projects using uh, media, social media, radio, other medias like TV, other audiovisual spaces, uh, making uh, video projects uh, for inclusion, and about the artistic thing, the use in this case of a uh, element of art production through theater. This is the theatrical uh, staging. Uh, theatrical pieces, this is a way of uh, activating people with disability, staging these uh, works at secondary school and with the uh, income from these uh, performances go to other neighborhood organizations that also require from this uh, aid. This circularity of all organizations and this positioning of the person with disability inside the very communities and looking at the community as a proposal, if you want to, you would invite everybody to join a theatrical project or also uh, capacitation projects for anybody interested in the community. And this is now to another level that has to do with active citizens' participation. Uh, Pablo talk about the struggle for rights uh, with, of people with disability in our country, many years of struggle by the families. And now, this commitment and this responsibility, fighting for the rights, is the very person with disability. And the first person uh, at this moment, it's important to say, is us and with us, the larger and more participative and committed possible. Other actions, uh, actions with regards to the educational, academic spaces also, uh, Speaking up on those projects, uh, expressing the rights of people with disability, dealing with topics like independent life specifically. And actually, we also wonder ourselves which difficulties are about this with these actions. There are several achievements that have been mentioned the community should be a support with, for people with disability and about difficulties. Uh, well, it's not always, uh, not, not always the community receives openly. There are spaces of segregation, and this is a challenge for us, for the community, about a healthy, a healthy coexistence. But we go on uh, in our work into the network. We have to acknowledge the possibilities and difficulties we face every day. We are planning a scenario in which there is an ideological component about how do we think communities should be and how they are actually be, are. But about this, uh, this uh, issue of circularity of social economy, they wanted to 
come here, please come. They knew we were giving this talk. Marco Polo is his artistic name. He belongs to the group of Independent Life. Where do you live? In, in, at Moron, or uh, we live in a house around the corner. Do you live together, right? Yeah, we are four. We are friends. We are talking about the neighborhood community. Do you know anybody in the neighborhood? Do they help you? Yeah, there is this people at the supermarket, uh, the news uh, stand guy, and also we go a lot to the bakery. Uh, but they are into diet, so they do not go so often now. The care community makes uh, communication horizontal. Like Isabel was saying, Isabel wanted to show herself the balcony. We also talk about issues of weight and health, so you, you're also uh, support for the neighborhood. So. Thank you, guys. They knew we were giving this uh, talk, and they came, and they, we told them, come and participate. They are ready to participate. Thank you. So, well, to wrap up, we wanted to talk about this. Uh, yeah, actually, into this journey in a network sharing with so many organizations, we integrate several concepts and about circular economy, this biomimetics notion came up. Has it, the, has it anything to do with us? What does it mean? It's about taking elements or actions, workings uh, in nature is to pick up some models, not just about imitation, but functional. So architecture, it takes things from bio uh, mimicry or biomimicry. It's about studying how aerodynamics works for, uh, for instance, uh, birds that improve the working of planes, or for instance, robots <coughs> are made on the basis of knowledge of insects' uh, movements. So this is about taking from nature the best for the workings of organizations and uh, the other way around our contribution to nature. We think, we realize that this exercise, we do it all the time because we analyze, we observe our community, identifying patterns, uh, and how do we include into that? To start studying community from that point seems interesting to us because we have the chance to <coughs> use what we have. We dive into the water and we do the best with what we have. We use this biomimicry thing and we created the neighborhood mimicry. For instance, to put an example, the, for instance, the signalactic about uh, this is beneficial for the person with disability signals, um, all kind of uh, signs about, for instance, the working of a club, the methodology. This is something beneficial. Uh, we also take, uh, oh, think, how can we push forward in Argentina where we won't have 
public policy programs funding independent life, how do we do this? So we thought, for instance, to reproduce a system, uh, for instance, uh, how does a home with retired people work with a pension and so on? We reproduce this for people with disability. That kind of actions, reflection, analysis, looking for sustainability and the well-being uh, uh, from the community point of view, we call that neighborhood mimicry. This lets us to, lets us to think uh, and rethink thing, nurturing us, ourselves from resources of nature that are infinite. So we invite you uh, to build this environment of care where every voice counts and every action adds up. Uh, promoting exchange that strengthens us as community. So thanks a lot. We are so happy of sharing this space with you and listening to you and learning from these beautiful uh, spaces. Thanks to you, Nora and Nicolas, talking about community life. What could I say? I am Argentinian, but with this beautiful community we have in Argentina, it's a pity not to uh, use it. Now, Simon Duffy and Andrea, uh, they are into the Fox Group in Doncaster. They are going to tell us about this community warden uh, well being uh, centers and neighborhood attention strategies, they're going to speak in English, so and if you have this interpretation button, you can choose uh, either Spanish or English. Since they are speaking in English, please choose Spanish if you can't understand English. Simon, the floor is yours. Well, Natalia, gracias, thank you. Um, is it possible to show the little film first? Yes, perfect, don't worry. So if you have the film, you can share your screen with the sound. And uh, uh, okay, I didn't prepare to do that. I'll I'll say a little bit first, then. Uh, you, okay. And then and then I'll go and find the film. Um, okay. Perfect. So um, the um, did you also so the slides I provided. Um, are you going to share them or do you want me to share the English version? Did you translate them more? No. So uh, it will be better if you can share your screen with okay. the with the so presentation. Just, if... I'll do that then. Thank you very much. So apologies, these slides are in English. Don't worry, because we have the translation. So Okay. So uh, I want to say thank you for the previous speakers as well. Uh, it's very inspiring, and uh, we, too, are thinking a lot about regenerative and sustainable solutions for the future. Um, we think that is the critical question for how to um, protect human rights and advance citizenship, is we have to create sustainable models, and we have to learn from each other, but also by paying attention to what we can learn from nature. I'm going to introduce a group that inspires me. Um, probably it's the thing in everything that I do, it is the group that um, brings the most to my heart. So it's a group uh, that exists, oh, about 15 miles, 25 kilometers <laughs> away from where I live in the north of England. Um, and I have been working a little bit with the group since it, it began its life. Um, but I am not responsible for any of the brilliant things about this group. Um, and then I will find the film, as Andrea says a little bit more, Andrea is part of the group and is one of the leaders for the group. So I'm just going to give some introductory comments. Uh, yes, sorry, Simon. One of you want we can you we have the video, so if you want, we can share it for you. Oh well, let's do that first then. So you, okay. I'll let, I'll stop sharing. And uh... thank you very much. 
ponelo. The levels of hardship I think that we're seeing now is something that I haven't seen Korea. It's on every level and scale from children to older people. There is a level that is not being met. People focus group is a community project that's set up around peer support. People helping people. Anybody can be a person. I'll be down in about 10 minutes. Okay. Okay, see you in a minute. Community Walk is one of the greatest initiatives that we've ever created in PFG. The walk is about connecting people and also people back. Yeah, they need to try to help the mother. We don't need to help the mother to help. We need help. The first because of nice to me. They didn't want anything back. 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 They didn't We stop a lot of hardship. We got further down the line, we're getting to the race there, and you reach a point. One of the things that we find really difficult is when, when we get some funding, it's made up from the one to measure the impact of numbers. The numbers don't make any sense. You know, we've got six people walking to the people that you've done something absolutely work with. And it's about being able to tell stories and why it's important. It's got to be done. Oh, like this. Uh, Simon, sorry, you are mute. Sorry about that. Okay. So People Focus Group is a community group, but it's a community group that really started with people with disabilities and people with mental health problems coming together. And as we saw in the earlier discussions, people were campaigning demanding their rights. But what happened is that the group started to discover that the most powerful thing they could do, they continue to campaign, but the most powerful thing they can do is to help each other. And then as they learn that they can help each other, they learn that they can actually help the community. So this is really interesting, uh, I think, example of how self-advocacy can almost become community development. And so this group is now very large. It extends over the city of Doncaster. It has three and a half thousand members. Doncaster is a northern city, uh, an industrial city, but like many cities in the north of England, it's also seen a lot of economic decline. Um, and um, as you can tell from the little film, a lot of the communities in these cities themselves have declined. They have lost economic power. They have lost local shops, local resources. Services that exist are often a long way away from the places uh, themselves. And so um, what has happened is that this group then took over a building called the Wellness Center in the middle of one of the most deprived neighborhoods called Intake, 
So that's a, a little neighbourhood, a barrio inside Doncaster. Um, and it started to do lots and lots of different actions over time. So it's now been running for 14 years. It's um, And at the beginning of its life, it was the system, people in government and people in public services were very challenged by it. So they're looking a bit frightened by people with disabilities, people with mental health problems saying, no, this is what we should be doing. And then just taking action, not waiting for permission, but taking action. Uh, but over time, the system started to realize that this was incredible force for good and has started to listen better to the community. So these are just some of the things that the group has created. The idea of support buddies is simply the idea of people helping people, people with disabilities helping other people with disabilities. And that's really at the heart of a lot of what a uh, people focus group does. But they do all, all sorts of other things. And Andrea might tell a, a little bit more detail, but they've created a crisis service for people with mental health crises called Safe Space. They've created a group for Muslim ladies who are often isolated and who've now come together. Um, and they've created groups for people from the lesbian, gay, trans, queer community. They've created groups for people with autism and all these different groups also collaborate. So learn from each other, share skills. They've created community wardens, which we saw in the film, which is people going out to support, act, connect people in the community. They've created Better You, which is a mental health service for younger people, led by people, younger people themselves. A community ambulance to keep away the stigma of ambulances from people with mental health. Food and clothes banks, terrible necessities in the United Kingdom today because we've suffered from 15 years of austerity and very right-wing governments that have reduced social security. So the communities had to step up, helping people get jobs, bumping spaces, which is helping people connect in community, and sometimes just very, very intense individual support. So, Andrea, do you want to unmute? And I've just got these pictures to share. And maybe you want to pick up just a few examples of some of the most powerful things you think PFG are doing to support the community. Thank you, Simon. And thank you, everyone, for telling your stories, which, as Simon has said, is very, very inspiring and very similar to what we're experiencing in our community. Um, as, as Simon has very eloquently put, we, we are in a very deprived area in the city. We serve a varied amount of people that um, suffer with a range of problems from mental health to physical health to physical disabilities, learning disabilities. And we moved away from being very, very centric on mental health to being very community focused. And the Wellness Centre is our hub for, for people to come in and access the support that they so need in the community. One of the projects that is not on the long list that we've already talked about is a recent project that's, that's operating from the Wellness Centre. Um, it's a collaborative food um, project where we're working with local supermarkets where they are giving uh, freely their surplus on an evening um, and what we're able to do with that is put that in the center on an evening where people can come in and help themselves really to free food because they're unable to feed their families and this will get worse as the winter um, goes on um, we are surrounded by a lot of elderly people and the community wardens project was born out of that where a lot of people were isolated, incapable of coming out into the community, even to access their doctor's appointments, their medical appointments, to go out and buy food or just 
really to see other people. Um, and the community wardens help people with that. They're either a friendly face or they do things like help them clear um, obstacles from their houses so they're not falling and tripping over. Um, they're taking people to their medical appointments there in the winter, we take out warm packs. So that might be hats, gloves, um, little sachets of teas, coffees, soups. Um, and we connect people to services when they need them. We've also recently worked with the armed forces and we've developed a veterans group. So we have a lot of armed forces personnel in Doncaster who were very isolated. Um, and Blue, uh, who's Kelly, one of the director's hus husband now, um, is ex armed forces. So we've developed an armed forces group and they work very independently as well with us. And they are very active in the community with us. So they work alongside us mm -hmm. to work at the local hospital, to go and help out there. Um, and we work at um, the mental health trust and go and see people on the wards. We do prison visits, um, a whole range of things that, that we do. Um, one of the things that is very, very close to our hearts is the young people. And as Simon said, we, we've got um, a young people's mental health service that supports people aged 16 to 25 years. And that came from young people presenting in crises, uh, at the hospital who were really struggling with their mental health, but didn't have anywhere to go and get that support that is other than medication or seeing the doctor. Um, and now our young people that come to that service are very vocal. They help, help to design services. They go and talk to doctors and tell them what they need um, and how they need to respond to young people. And we're also doing that with the general hospital as well. So we, we've come from a very small group of people that, that needed a voice in the community to being very active and very influential, I would say, over the last four years, where we are working with commissioners and funders, um, health planners, social care planners to help redesign services so they are more responsive to people in the community. It's not always work, I've got to say. We do a lot of play in this, as you can see from the pictures that Simon's put on here. Um, we have a very active social um, groups where we go to cinemas, we go to um, theatre. Um, food is always involved, so there's lots of going out to eat. Um, we've won the Queen's Award for Community, which was the last award that Her Majesty presented before for a death um, and we've won lots of local awards as well um, so for us the, the greatest reward or award for us is that somebody comes into the wellness center who are often broken and very lost they are struggling with their mental health problems and a lot of practical issues and they become part of the family and they start giving back with, with the work that we do um, so yes, that, that's those uh, the people, because I'm sure there's all that I can talk about, but I hear it all along how we do. Do Thanks, Andrea. I think that's probably a, enough of a sense, hopefully, of um, that and hope you, you know, but I think that relates very, very well to the, the power of the earlier stories as, as well. So thank you very much. Pues muchas gracias, compañeros de, de Doncaster. Thank you very much to our colleagues from Doncaster. Thank you for telling us about the experiences from Albacete in Spain and Argentina. And now it's time for you to work some time. We're going to split the rooms now. Natalia is going to get the rooms ready. We are about 70 people, so we're going to organize about seven rooms. And I'm going to be sharing the screen with you. We're going to answer some questions that we will 
live with you through Menti, you will see a direct link to the question. When you see the link in the chat, if you click on it, you will be able to access the Mentimeter, which is a system that enables us to share the responses. If you see inside there, you can see a QR code and you can also see a button that allows you to start. Sorry, this was the video from before. So, these are the questions that we will have to answer within the different breakout rooms. I would ask you to answer at least, to have at least a couple of answers per question. This is the first question. What is working in your communities to create a, a project that is more based in solidarity. I need you to think in something that you might be doing in your neighborhoods, in your cities, that you are aware of and that you can tell us, similar to what you we have heard before. And we have another question also that is related to uh, how we can find more information about this project, whether it is names or links or um, any information that you think can help us connect to that experience so that from our network, since we find it so important to keep and preserve all these connections that we might start. And um, we have another question that is an open question. It says, what do you think you and your allies can do in your own neighborhood? Um, this is about planning something that you specifically can do within your communities, what sort of experiences can be developed in order to have more inclusive communities and have uh, communities of care such as the ones that we have seen before. For all these matters, we will allow about 15 minutes, uh, about five minutes per question, and then we will have some extra five minutes to share. Bueno, pues, bienvenidas de nuevo a todas las personas. Creo Welcome, que están... everyone. Back to the general meeting room. I think that everybody is already back. So, thank you very much for your work. We are seeing that we're still receiving answers. But with the mentee, we said as we said the other day that we were going to keep it open. So if you access this link later on, you can still add your answers and we will share your answers tomorrow or the day after when we actually post this seminar. We will try to group your answers with everybody because it's going to, we don't have much time now. I'm not going to ask my colleague Marcos to see if I can read your answers from here. So let's have a look at some of the questions that you've given, the answers that you've given to the first question. What is working now in your community in order to create um, more um, um, neighborhood, more focus in solidarity. The continuity of the local aspect, um, profiting from mobilizing the community, the neighbors to solve the neighborhood problems. There's, uh, hold it for a second so I can read it well. There are local shops And that many people really value. Well, I think that this answer is have is has been cut in the middle. Somebody is also holding a yearly festival in the neighborhood, and if I understand well, sort of a yard sale or a small farmers market. People with disabilities can go use the services offered by the community, such as hairdressing services or doing some shopping. If we can look a bit down to the screen, scroll down to the 
bottom of the screen. We've created a map to show all the neighborhoods in my city, which is Sheffield, and to spot good things going on. There's also a WhatsApp group for the street that unfortunately is not being used much after COVID. Many needs, many people willing to help. There's a person from the Canary Islands Federation, uh, Jose Luis Montesinos. Um, there's another. There's another initiative from an association that they would like to see pushed forward from the municipality government. I remind you that you can all read these questions. Marcus, can we move to the next question, please? So, how can we find more information, such as names or links or contact details? We see different organizations here, for instance, in Catalonia, or we can also inform about resources and activities that are accessible for everyone. There's a website included in the Micasa project, which is called conectorescomunitarios.org. They have a map where we have supported up to 6,000 connections by our community um, participants within Spain, and you will see specific people working on inclusion for people with disabilities uh, within the pro framework of this project. We also recommended inclusionactiva.org. And we have moved to the next question. What could you and your allies do in your neighborhood to go out in the streets, to introduce ourselves, to create uh, spaces for people to meet? We also need to help people take up active roles that fit their interests, skills, and their needs in of the neighborhood. We need to create more flexible open spaces where people can come together, meet, connect, and carry out creative actions. We need to share our voice and our community media for our neighborhood, the digital platforms and also traditional platforms and more meetups. We need to create a good spirit for our own neighborhood. We also need to find the way to create other governance means for the neighborhood that are more inclusive that includes more people and that helps people act and advocate for the neighborhood. We need to act as with, the, with anybody else. We need crear, to reduce loneliness and make sure everyone has friends. Para que las personas puedan compartir, to eh, espacios verdes create ways y, so that people también, can uh, green spaces and maybe orchards as well, so that they act as a connector within the community to give visibility of other projects and social work that is being done to make sure that the parties we make in order to celebrate things, and these things are really um, a key to establishing connections between the different neighbors. We need to create more 
spaces that are accessible before wheelchairs. We need to promote education and inclusion and promote diversity and multiculturality. We need to act for the full inclusion of people with disabilities and speak up when there are things that are not working well. So I've written many questions. And since we will be able to share these answers, Simon, Marcus, I think we have this um, moment for sharing uh, the last part of your presentation in the last five minutes that we have. Marcus. Hola, everybody, and greetings from Finland. I'm very glad to meet all of you here today. As we saw, we are a collective force bringing people together, our ideas, our solutions, our people power in our localities, in our neighborhoods of care. So how to create these conditions where that change can happen is a very good question. Uh, for me, I would like to talk about freedom. Me personally, I started in 1997 in Finland with a progressive association called Lüchtu, which was founded by people that used to work before in Finnish institutions. And our main strategy we had at Lüchtu was to explore the total opposites of the institutionalized care, being active, mobile, brave, experimental, community-oriented, and supporting self-direction and self-realization of people who need continuous support in their lives. Later on, I could have trust and freedom to, to develop European mobility, youth education and inclusion programs with people from all over Europe. This freedom led to me to meet Simon, and later many more people, and in the end today, all of you in creating a worldwide network of citizens, creating new opportunities to live a good life together with our gifts as us, as individuals with our own and shared desires, dreams and visions in creating places where we live in our own localities, having companions and friends all over the world. Having the freedom to move forward as a person and as a community is essential to explore the emerging collective transformations together. The other keys to citizenship are also important. Having a meaning and a collective direction or directions that are understood by all. Committed steps forward with the people you live with. Creating a new focus on individuals in their own neighborhoods offers a place for keys of money, home, help, a platform to build a community. We can create our own life and we can experience love and compassion. We need to focus on the positive forces we can create together. Please, Simon. Um, yes. Thanks, Marcus. Well, I think just a very simple thought, really. I think in the earlier presentation, um, we talked about citizenship as a, a set of legal rights and responsibilities. But citizenship can be more than that. It can be a kind of force for transformation. It can be the responsibility we all share for building relationships and for transforming our neighborhoods and transforming our lives together. And I think that all of the examples from today share that spirit of citizenship, which goes far beyond a legal framework and is much more about the quality of the life we live together. And so I think in terms of the conditions for change uh, that that will support neighborhood care, perhaps it's that faith in each other and in our citizenship that we need to take forward. And if we're working 
if we're a person with disabilities, then the stories today demonstrate the power of people with disabilities coming together and taking action. But if we are a, a professional, if we're working in services, then we have the unique opportunity to be a partner with the people with disabilities, not to provide services to people with disabilities, but to be a partner in enabling that citizenship to come to life and transforming the places where we all live. Because neighborhood care is about the life that we will all live together in community. So it is good for all of us. Thank you. So thank you, uh, colleagues. Thank you for being quick. I have to say goodbye and close this seminar. We are out of time. So next November the 19th, we have the third seminar about care communities. Um, i looking forward to seeing you there. Uh, please subscribe uh, for this next seminar. and been so well accompanied us today. I hope you like this session. I would like to thank Citizen Networks for the truthful collaboration and also to become members of Citizen Networks. They have a web, they have social media, easy to find. Um, most likely, Marcus and Simon will be delighted to uh, answer your uh, questions, your proposals. So I invite you to participate with them. And that's all. See you soon, hopefully. Goodbye.